All right, now we're going to do question number two at the bottom of the first page on the back. And what this question is, it's a little bit different than a standard question. I'm not looking for an answer. I am looking to prove something true, okay? And this is something you were asked to do on the AP exam sometimes. It says, using their Taylor series, show that first, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And then second, if capital F is equal to the antiderivative of e to the x, with capital F of 0 equals 1, that's finding your C, that capital F is also e of x, e to the x. Now that's a lot of stuff to talk about, so let's break it down into smaller chunks. So the first thing I want to do is show that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x using the Taylor series. So how do you think I'm going to do that? Anybody have an idea? Use the chart. Okay, so let's look at the chart. What does the chart say about e to the x? It says it is, there it is right there. It's that series right there. So what do you think I'm going to do with that series? Copy it. Copy it down and then take its derivative. derivative and see if it's the same thing I started with. Okay? Well, usually when you take the derivatives, things change. But we're going to see if that's the case in this problem. So the first thing we're going to do is down here, write letter A, and we're going to copy down e to the x. So just copy it right off the chart. So it's 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the third over 3 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial plus dot dot dot. And then the last term is x to the n over n factorial. Well, actually, it's not the last term because it goes on forever. There we go. So there's e to the x copied off the chart. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative of both sides. So the derivative of e to the x is the derivative of this. So what is the derivative of 1? 0. Plus, what's the derivative of x? 1. Plus, now remember that the denominators are constants. And when you take the derivative, a constant just sits there. So basically, the 2 factorial is going to sit there, and you take the derivative of the numerator. So what is the derivative of this numerator? 2x. And then 3x squared over 3 factorial, 4x to the third over 4 factorial, plus dot, dot, dot. And then what would the nth term be? n times x to the n minus 1 over n factorial, plus dot, dot, dot. Okay? Now, right now, that doesn't look like e to the x. But can we clean it up to make it look like e to the x? That's the question. Okay? Well, first of all, 0 is going to go away. The first term matches, yes? Mm -hmm. The second term, does it reduce, does this reduce to make x? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay, so we're looking pretty good here. D D X, we're on the right track, equals 1 plus X plus, okay, 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. The 3 on top will cancel with the 3 on the bottom, leaving what? 2 times 1, which is 2 factorial. So this will now become X squared over 2 factorial. Because this right here, this right here, is 3 times 2 times 1. Keep all the terms there. The 3 will cancel with the 3, so I'm left with the 2 times 1, which is 2 factorial. Okay? Will the same thing happen on the next term? Yes. yes. The 4 cancels with the 4 of the factorial, leaving 3 times 2 times 1. So this is now x to the third over 3 factorial, plus dot, dot, dot. Okay? Now what about, hang on just a second, yes? Can we just assume each time we cross it out, the factorial just drops by one instead of thinking about like the multiplying it? Like it just reduces by one? You can if it's the first term, yes. If the number on top is the first term of the factorial, it does reduce it by one, yes. So that's the same, basically? Yes, yes, okay, okay. yes. Okay. So what's going to happen here? What is the bottom going to become? 
based on what Jocelyn just, just said, she said if these two match, the factorial drops by one. Isn't that what's happening? N minus one. So this will now be n minus one yeah. factorial on the bottom. So the n cancels the n factorial, and I have x to the n minus one over n minus one factorial, plus dot, dot, dot. Now, this nth term doesn't match, but are they in the same pattern? Yes. How is this term compared to this term? This is x to the n minus 1. This is x to the n. Where would this one be in relation to that one? Right before it. So this is the n minus, this is the term right before this term. So the series is the same. So I could theoretically add on the next term to be x to the n over n factorial, couldn't I? Plus dot, 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 and now they match. OK? So we can now say that d dx of e to the x is e to the x. And let's put a little therefore in front of it. So we have now shown that the derivative is itself. So I've told you way back when that the derivative of e to the x was copy-paste because it's the same thing. And now we've proved that their Taylor series are also the same derivative. Okay? Questions? Okay, that takes care of part A. Do you have a question? No? All right. Part B says capital F is the antiderivative of e to the x. Okay, so let's just do that much first. Anytime they give us a point, you know what we do with that point? You know why, why it's there? Plug in for what purpose? To find the what? What does every integral have on the end of it? Plus c. It's going to find your plus c for you, okay? So let's just take care of this antiderivative part. So down here on part B, they say that capital F of x is equal to the antiderivative of e to the x dx. Okay, I'm going to scoot this up so you can see what I'm writing. But I'm not going to recopy e to the x again. I want to just go put my finger right here. And now I want to take the antiderivative of every term. However, we noticed on the front that any time you take an antiderivative, the c goes first. So I'm going to first thing is write the c down, and then start writing the terms after that. Okay. So let's think antiderivative. Antiderivative of one, x. Antiderivative of x, one half x squared. Okay. Plus. Now remember the the term the denominator just sits there. So let's go ahead and write it this way. What is the top antiderivative going to be? One third, One third x to the third over two factorial. Agreed? You see what I just did? Yes. Why does the denominator shift Because constants can be, remember constants can be moved out of integrals. Oh, yes. So basically I'm mentally moving it outside, taking the antiderivative and kind of moving it back. Okay. So what would the next term be? One fourth x to the fourth over three factorial plus one fifth x to the fifth over four factorial plus dot 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 plus hmm one over what? n plus 1, x to the n plus 1 over n factorial plus dot, dot, dot. Yes, ma'am? You just took the antiderivative of the numerator is, right? Yes. Okay. Just took the, because the constants just sit there. All right. Now, before I try solving for c, I am going to clean this up. Okay. Now we're hoping it's going to turn into something that looks like e to the x, and let's see if it does. Well, hopefully c is going to turn into a 1. That would be perfect, wouldn't it? The next terms match. Is, x, is this the same thing as this? Yes. So I'm going to write it that way. So this is equal to c plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial. 
okay? Is there any way I can turn this next term into this? Yes, you can multiply the top and bottom by 3, or you can just move the 3 to the bottom. Do you see what I'm saying? You can do it either, you can think of it either way. Because this is a fraction over fraction, that, that denominator just moves to the bottom. So the bottom would then be 3 times 2 factorial, which is 3 factorial. Do you follow what I'm saying? Okay, if I move this 3 down there, 3 oh, times yeah. 2 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, which is 3 factorial. So now I have x to the third over 3 factorial. Plus, is the same thing going to happen on the next term? Yeah. Yes. So the 4 moves down, x to the fourth over 4 factorial, and then x to the fifth over 5 factorial, plus dot, 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 plus, hmm, what about the next term? It is going to be n plus 1 factorial on the bottom. The factorial always went up 1. So n plus 1 factorial x to the n plus 1 plus dot, dot, dot. Now how does this term compare to this term? It's 1 ahead. It's 1 ahead. Okay? Now, here is my antiderivative. Agreed? Now. The next part of the problem said f of 0 is 1. So that means I'm plugging in 0 for which letter? x. That's all, well, I have some n's in here. But it's going to go in there for x. So f of 0 is equal to c plus, what's the next term going to be? 0. And the next term? 0. So plus 0 plus 0 plus dot 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 plus I don't care what n this is. 0 to a power is always 0 divided by anything else is going to be 0. Okay? And f of 0 is supposed to equal what? What did the problem tell me it's supposed to equal? It is supposed to equal 1. So c is going to equal 1. There it is. So now we can write our problem as f, capital F of x equals 1 plus just take this line we wrote right here and just recopy it. x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus dot dot dot. I don't need to write them all down. Just enough to get the point across. x to the n over n factorial. I'm going to squeeze in the one that matches. And then the one, I'm going to do the n plus 1 after it. Remember because x to the n is the matching term. And then we're going to say that that equals e to the x. That was the point, is to show that that is the same as e to the x, which it is. So that is the way to mathematically prove that something that they hypothesize is true. You basically set up the problem, work through what they say, and make sure that somewhere in the end you say, okay, here it is, I showed you that it works. So the very last statement said, I have it off the screen, I know, it says capital F of X equals E to the X. So I better say that down here, and I did. I said capital F of X equals all of this, which is E to the X. Okay? Questions? Yes? Uh, can you, back when you were writing on the, the factorials, like for home, um, when you said C plus X plus X squared over 2 factorial and everything, mm -hmm. uh, can you kind of explain why it's N plus 1 factorial again? Okay. Because if I move n plus 1 down here, can you see what I'm writing? Okay, n plus 1 times n factorial is n plus 1 times n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3, which is n plus 1 factorial. It would be the same thing if you started with n plus 1 and then just went down. So that's why it becomes n plus 1 factorial. Okay, another thing, look at this right here. When this was a 5 and this was a 4, it went up to a 5. So whatever I moved down is what my new factorial became. You see that? I had a 4, I moved it down, it became 4 factorial. I had an n plus 1, I moved it down, it became n plus 1 factorial. Now that doesn't happen all the time, but since it happened consistently here, I can assume it's going to happen here. Okay? Any other questions? 
Are we good? Okay. Now, let's move on to look at the next page for just a second. This is what we did also last class. We talked about if I give you a specific series that is already done for us, how do we change it? Well, we had sine of x, we changed it to one half of x. So everywhere we saw an x, we put in a one half of x and we cleaned it up. Okay, we're going to do some more of that, but with a much simpler series. We did three problems on here. We're going to go to the back of this page. So turn the page and go to the back. Okay, we're going to look at this other series right here, which was on the list as well. It is 1 over 1 plus x. Now you're thinking, so what? That doesn't look like anything important like sine or cosine or e. But what's really nice about it is look at what the series turns into. What is the one thing this series doesn't have that all the other ones did? There's no n factorial anywhere. And the reason there's not is because it cancels out every time. And so this one has no coefficients to worry about. It's just 1x, x squared, x cubed, x fourth, and it's alternating. Okay? So we're going to do a little bit of algebra for a minute. This make make you think about easier math, the day back when we did easier math. So look at 10. It says if f of x is this function, how do you write f of 2x? This is just, just algebra. I substitute the 2x where the what? Where the x is. So I just write 1 over 1 plus 2x instead. The 2x replaces the x. Just like on the sine one that we looked at a minute ago, the 1 half x replaced the x of sine. Okay? So how would this look for negative x? 1 over 1 minus x, right? What about f of x squared? Be careful. 1 over 1 plus x squared. All right, now what about d? What is d doing? Where does the 4x go? On the outside. So you could do 4x times 1 over 1 plus 3x. And if I wanted to make it into one fraction, where would the 4x go? On the top. So 4x over 1 plus 3x, like so. Oh, yes, when math was so simple like this, right? The good old days when math was simple. OK, now we're going to take this understanding and we are going to find some power series for some of these. So letter A turned into this. So I want to find the power series for that based on the one at the top of the page. OK, so we're going to write f of x equals. So what did we do? We just replaced the x with a 2x. So that means in the series, we do the same thing. Every x becomes a 2x. So we have 1 minus parentheses 2x plus parentheses 2x the quantity squared minus 2x the quantity cubed plus 2x the quantity to the fourth plus dot 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 plus, now look at what comes next, negative 1 to the n, x to the n. Are the signs on my answer, the signs, the same as the signs of the original problem? Do they start with the same sign? Yes. So the negative 1 to the n is not changing at all, and it never does unless you multiply by a negative. So instead of x to the n for the nth term, what should I write? 2x to the n, just like that, plus dot, dot, dot. <coughs> OK? That's it. That was easy, right? That's all I want. That one doesn't need to clean up much more than that. OK, let's go to 12. I know I kind of ran into 12. Bear with me here. Find a power series for 1 plus x squared. That was letter C. Can you do that yourself? Plug in x squared for all the x's. Now go back to the top, remember. Go ahead and write that out. What's it going to be? 1 minus and so on. I'm going to let you do it. Okay. 
I haven't run the nth term, but look at the screen and see if you got what I got. Just replacing all the x's with x squareds. <clears throat> okay. So the general term is negative 1 to the n, and then what? x squared to the n. The x to the n becomes x squared to the n. Okay. This one I am going to clean up a little bit more. So f of x equals 1 minus x squared plus what? x to the fourth. x to the fourth minus? x to the sixth. plus x to the eighth plus dot 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 plus negative 1 to the n. Now notice what, what powers are my, my powers are going up by how much every time? Isn't that minus dot dot dot? It is minus dot dot dot. You're right. <clears throat> so what is the new power going to be? Well, look at what you wrote up here. What do you do to the 2 and n? Add them or multiply them? Multiply. Multiply. So that's 2 times n. Does that make sense? This is 2n to the 0. This is 2 times 0. 2 times 1 for the power of x. 2 times 2 for the power of x. 2 times 3 for the power of x. And so on. Okay? Pretty straightforward. Any questions on this one? Yes, ma'am. How do you know what's a plug in number? Like, where are we plugging the numbers into? Okay. Here's my series right here. This x turned into x squared. So all the x's on the other side also turn into x squared. Oh, so we were, plugging, we were replacing this original equation? Yes, with x squared. Because we found in letter C right here, that f of x squared is 1 over 1 plus x squared. So that says if you replace x with x squared, you get this. So that's taking, that means, oh, I need to take this and replace what was an x with an x squared. So we just copied the original series but replaced all the x's with x squared? Yes, ma'am. Okay? All right, jump to 13. We need to do one with a multiplier. This is letter D. So. Does 4x have a power series? The answer is no, because it's just 4x. It's so simple. So what we do is when we have a situation like this, we think of this as the way we wrote it separately. OK? So we're going to take the 4x, leave it off to the side, and then do the power series for 1 over 1 plus 3x. Does that make sense? So we start out by writing the 4x down, and then this tells me replace all my x's with 3x. So it's going to be 1 minus 3x plus 3x the quantity squared minus 3x the quantity cubed plus 3x to the fourth minus dot 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 plus negative 1 to the n and 3x to the n and close my plus dot 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 and close my parentheses for the 4x. All right, let's go ahead and distribute and clean it up a little bit more and see if we can change the way this looks because we're going to have to modify this because of the 4x. So this will now be 4x times 1 is 4x minus, what's the second term? 12x squared plus, careful, what's the next term going to be? Thirty-six. X to the third. third. Are you all seeing thirty-six? You've got to square the three, which is nine, times the four out in front, okay? Minus three to the third is what? Twenty-seven times four happens to be a hundred and eight. X to the fourth. I'm going to skip the next one and just keep, go on. Okay. Now, is it still negative 1 to the n? Well, because you don't see the sigma and not really sure where to start, just ask yourself, has the sign pattern changed or stayed the same? The sign pattern. This one started out minus plus excuse me, plus, minus, plus, minus. Is this still plus, minus, plus, minus? Yes. So the negative 1 to the n doesn't change. Okay, now here's the question. 
This happens to be just a 4, right? This is 4 times 3. This is 4 times 3 times 3, right? 4 times 3 times 3 times 3. So every term has a what? N numerically, every term has a 4. Agreed? This is a, does anybody know what kind of progression this is? It is exponential, but it's also geometric because you're multiplying each term by 3, right? So this will be 3, is it 3 to the n or 3 to something like plus 1 or minus 1? I don't know. Okay, this is the first, this is the 0 term. So do I want this to be a 0 for the first term? It's just 3 to the n. I want this to be a 0. Okay, that takes care of the numbers. What about the x's? x to the what? x to the n minus 1. Okay, it's going to have an n for sure. Now, the first term before didn't have an n. Now it does. So it has to be n plus 1. It has to be 1 higher than the one before. The first one was x to the n, so this one needs to be x to the n plus 1 because it now has one more n, or one more x, because of the 4x that was out front. Okay, think of it this way. This is the zero term. If I plug a zero in for n, am I going to get an x right here? Zero plus one? Yes, and I want one. If I just put x to the n, I wouldn't get my x here. The next one, this is the first term, so one plus one makes x squared, and that's what I want. Okay? Questions on that? All right. Now, two days ago we watched a video on pi. And we talked, it talked about the calculus behind pi. We're actually going to do the math to show you how they found pi using calculus. Okay? Look at number 15. It says, use this power series. 1 over 1 plus x to find a power series for tangent inverse. And then we're not going to worry about finding its interval of convergence. We're going to use it to approximate the value of pi. All right. Now, this right here looks very similar to the derivative of tangent inverse. Does anybody happen to remember what the derivative of inverse tangent is? 1 over what? x squared plus 1. So. This needs to just be an x squared instead of an x, right? Yeah. So I'm going to write down that the derivative of tangent inverse of x is 1 over 1 plus x squared. I want to write it in that order so that it looks more like the power series I was given. Okay? Now go back and look at problem number 12. Problem number 12, we wrote a power series for that already. Okay? So, if the derivative of tangent inverse is this, what should I do to this power series to get tangent inverse? Let me say the question one more time. If the der derivative of this is this, what do I need to do to this to get this? Take the antiderivative. Anti so I need to take the antiderivative of this power series. So tangent inverse equals the antiderivative of that series I built in number 12, which is 1 minus x squared plus x to the fourth minus x to the sixth plus x to the eighth minus dot, 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 plus negative 1 to the n, x to the 2n. I got that from problem number 12. And you may want to make yourself a note of that so when you look at it again. From problem number 12. That's why I did problem number 12. DX. So I am now going to generate a power series for inverse tangent. Okay? So tangent inverse of x is equal to Let's take the antiderivative a term at a time. What's the first term going to be? X. Next term. One third x cubed 
Now there's no factorials in this one, remember. These all have no factorials at all. So next would be 1 fifth x to the fifth, right? Yes. Minus 1 seventh x to the seventh plus 1 ninth x to the ninth minus dot 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 plus negative 1 to the n. Ooh, let's think about that. What is x's power going to become when I take its antiderivative? 2n plus, n plus 1. It's just going to go up 1, right? And then so what has to go in front of it? 1 over that. So I'm going to put the over to be the, the alternator. So 2n plus 1 goes here, and then x to the 2n plus 1, plus dot, dot, dot. Tangent inverse of 1 is very easy numerically to calculate. If I plugged a 1 in, one in for all those x's, I could do the math on a calculator, couldn't I? Yes? Yeah. Okay. Now my big question is, what is the tangent inverse of 1 on a unit circle? Tangent inverse of 1. You learned this last year. I. What angle has a tangent oh. of 1? Oh. Pi over what? 45 degrees, which is pi over what in radians? Pi over 4. So what this tells us is that if I plug a 1 in for all these x's, and I could go on forever and ever, amen, I would get pi over 4, the irrational number. Okay. So let's write it down. Write this down with ones in for all the x's. So this will be 1 minus a third plus a fifth minus a seventh plus a ninth dot, 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 dot. That's what it's going to become. Okay. So that's an estimate for pi over 4. How can I change it to be an estimate of pi? multiply that whole string by 4. So <coughs> pi is going to be 4 times this sequence. 1 minus a third plus a fifth minus a seventh plus a ninth minus dot 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 dot. And that was the sequence they showed you on the video for an estimate for pi. Okay? So what I want you to do right now is take your calculator and I want you to go out a few more terms because this really doesn't get too close. What would be the next term after 9? It would be minus 1 over 11 plus 1 over 13 and you would keep going from there. So let's just play with this for a minute. So type in four parentheses. Make sure you don't forget the four. 1 minus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 5 minus 1 over 7 and so on. I went out to 13. Close my parentheses. And I get 3.28. What is pi again? 3.14. This is how they calculate all the decimals of pi. They go out more and more fractions every time. Now I stopped at 13 and I added that one in. So I would do, if I just push minus 1 over 15 plus 1 over 17 minus 1 over 19 plus 1 over 21. Whoops. 3.27, getting a little closer. And if I keep going, I'm eventually going to get to pi. Okay? Yes, sir? I thought pi was a fraction 22 over 7. That is an estimate of pi. That's the closest fraction with integers that they can come up with for pi. Because 22 over 7, over 7, is 3.1428. Pi is 3.14159. Okay, so it is the closest rational fraction that they can make that makes pi. The most accurate one. Okay? Any questions? You could play with this for quite a while, couldn't you? See how many decimal, I mean, how far out you go. Now let's go to the next page, please.
you are still going to need your calculators. We're going to do number 18. So turn over to the next page and look at number 18. 18 says, use a trapezoidal rule, oh, something from a while ago, to approximate the area under f of x equals e to the negative x squared on the interval from 0 to 1 with four trapezoids with equal bases. Then use a power series for the same approximation with an error less than 0 .001. Error will show up on the AP exam, I promise you, okay? So we need to start throwing some error practice into what we do, okay? So let's start with trapezoidal rule first. So usually with trapezoidal rule, we gotta build ourselves a T-chart, so we're going to do that. We are going from zero to one, we're using four equal subdivisions, so that means we need five numbers. I know I have six spaces here, but one's for x and one's for f of x. Starting at zero and going to one in four equal subdivisions means how far apart will they be? 0.25. So this is 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, and one. That's what I want. All right, I'm going to diverge a little bit from the way I went and did this in first period. Now, if I substitute zero into here, <clears throat> what's that gonna be? One, that's an easy one. If I substitute 0.25 into here, am I going to get a decimal answer? Yes, because it's an e to a power other than zero. So I'm going to just write this as e to the negative 0.25 squared. That is the most accurate answer. If I put it in the calculator and got a decimal, I would have to round that decimal. Do you agree with me? Mm -hmm. So this would be e to the negative 0.5 squared, e to the negative 0.75 squared, and then e to the negative 1 squared is just e to the negative 1. Now, just a minute, you may be thinking, wait a minute, Ms. Bell, I thought a negative squared was a positive. Why am I not squaring the 1? It's not in the parentheses, very good, okay? So when I go to write this out, I'm going to use the E's. That way, when I type it in the calculator, I will get the most accurate answer I can, all right? So here we go. So the trapezoid rule gives me, let's see if we remember. Okay, how does the trapezoid rule start? Does it get a one half or no? Yes, it does. Because the trapezoid formula, the trapezoid area formula does have a one half. Okay, the next thing we write is our delta x, our b value, base value, which in this case is what? 0.25. Okay, now I'm gonna do a bracket. Now, how, how do I treat those E's? What do I do? Do you remember? Uh, the first one is just one, and then the second is two to get to the end of Right. The first one is a single, then everyone in the middle is doubled until you get to the last one, and it is a single. That's because every bar in the middle of a trapezoid gets used twice, except for the first one and the last one. So this will be one plus two E to the negative 0.25 squared plus 2e to the negative 0.5 squared, plus 2e to the negative 0.75 squared, plus 1e to the negative 1. That is the most accurate way you can write the trapezoidal rule. Okay, now as soon as you're done writing, <coughs> grab your calculator and type it in. Oh, nice and visible, good. So one half, 0.5 times 0.25, and then times the parentheses, two E, oops, that's not, a, there we go. Don't make the same mistake I tend to make a lot, and that's forgetting to come down from the exponent after you square.
Okay, I'm writing this out several decimal places because I'm comparing it to something else. And I want to see how close it is. But the minimum you need to go is how many? How many decimal places? What's the minimum you have to go? Three. Three, three, three. Don't forget three. Three or more. All right. So we have done what it asked us to do for the area under the curve from zero to one with four trapezoids. We get 0.74. It's a tiny little area. Now we're going to use a power series for the same approximation with this as an error. So let's just worry about getting the power series written out first. So I'm going to move this aside, draw a line. So we're going to now create the power series for e to the negative x squared. All right. Now is when you need to pull out your flip chart. So everybody grab your flip chart. I'll grab mine, go to the last page, take a look at it. Which of the series am I going to use? E to the x. And I'm going to change all the x's to negative x squared. So put it off to the side. And let's start copying that down with the changes. So 1 plus negative x squared plus negative x squared squared over 2 factorial plus negative x squared cubed over 3 factorial plus negative x squared to the 4th over 4 factorial plus dot 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 now, because we're going to just be adding up some terms, getting the nth term is really not that important this time, okay? If you wanted to write it down, you could, but you don't have to. So, what I'm supposed to do is to find this power series. So let's write it out a little bit cleaner and see if it helps us out. Now, the first term would be 1, and then minus x squared now what sign will the next term be? Positive x to the fourth over 2 factorial. Do you agree with that? What about the next term? Minus x to the what? Sixth over 3 factorial plus, kind of jumped the gun there, x to the eighth over 4 factorial. Now could you just tell me what the next one would be? x to the tenth and it's negative over what? Five. 5 factorial plus dot dot dot. I just wrote another one just for fun just to see if I could see the pattern. Okay, tell me about this series. What kind of series is it? It is alternating, okay? When we talk about errors for alternating series, what do you remember? Yes. Wherever you stop adding, the error is the next term. Okay? So I want the error to be the next term. However, am I? Hmm. I'm supposed to be finding area. So what are you supposed to do with an equation if you're if you're trying to find the area under its curve? Take, take an antiderivative. Take an antiderivative. I, have I done that yet? No. No. Okay, so this right here is just e to the negative x squared. That's what that is. So in order to find the area, I need to do the integral of e to the negative x squared dx. But this one is actually definite. It tells me what to do it on, what interval to use. What does it tell me? Zero to one. Okay, so I'm gonna now write out the first few of these minus x to the 6th over 3 factorial plus x to the 8th over 4 factorial. That should be enough. I'm integrating this from 0 to 1 dx. So let's integrate first and then we'll talk about error. So antiderivative of 1 x minus one-third x to the third 
Now, it doesn't matter how much we clean these up. It really doesn't. Plus, what, what? One fifth x to the fifth over two factorial. Minus over three factorial. And let's go one more. One ninth x to the ninth over four factorial dot 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 bracket zero to one. Okay. Now they want the error to be less than point zero zero one. Okay. What am I going to be plugging in for x? One. So if I plug in one for x, all the x's are going to basically go away, right? Okay. If I plug in zero for x, what's going to happen? Zero. I'm getting all zeros. So what really matters is plugging in the one. Okay. So this is going to create the series one minus one third plus. Now once again, we can think about bringing that five down or multiplying top and bottom by five. That would be one over five times two factorial minus one over seven times three factorial plus one over nine times four factorial and so on. Now my question is, which term is the error term? Once I know what the error term is, I know I'm supposed to add up all the ones in front of it. Okay, 1 over 3 is not 0 0.001. What is this? 1 over what? That's 1 over 10. That's 0 0.1. That's not big enough. This is 1 over 7 times, what's 3 factorial? 6. 6. So this is 1 over 42. What is that? That's 0 0.023. That's not big enough. So let's move over. What's the next one? It's 1 over parentheses 9 times what's 4 factorial? 24. 24. Am I to point zero zero 0.001 yet? No. no, but this is probably going to be the last term. Let's check and see. What would the next term be? 1 over what? 11 times 5 factorial. So let's type that in the calculator and see what happens. Signs don't matter in this case, remember. 1 divided by 11 times 5 factorial. Factorial math, left arrow. Now that, you can't see, hang on. That is less than 0 .001. It's 0 .00007 because of the e to the negative 4. Okay, so that's my error term. I have just found my error term. So this is my chop off point. This is my error term. So my answer is adding up all the terms in front of them with the correct signs. So now I take my calculator and I type in 1 minus 1 third plus, we said this was 1 over 10, minus 1 over 42 plus 1 over I don't know what that is yet. 9 times 24. And there's my answer. I'm going to come up here and say that the area equals 0 0.747486 dot dot dot, which is pretty close to my estimate with trapezoids. Yes? You didn't include the 1 over 11. No, because that is the error term. The error term is always the, the first one you don't include. Okay? Sometimes the questions will say, use the first five terms to find the sum. Sometimes they'll say, use the first three terms. But in some instances, they're going to do exactly this. They're going to say, go until the error is this. Then you have to work it out, chop it off at the error, add up what comes before it. Do you see the difference between the two? Okay, you have to just figure out how many to go. Questions? Okay, that's it for today.